the thing is that our paper and the original paper are the only discussions on this this issue. So when people say it's a comet, they don't attempt to explain the anomalies I mentioned. They just ignore them. Okay? And that's what you should ask NASA officials when they say we are confident it's a comet. Okay, how do you explain the large mass of the object? How do you explain, mean, quantitatively, not just say, oh, comets are weird and some of them are unusual and therefore it's okay. They're all because, different, right? But that's not an explanation if you don't have enough mass in rocky material in interstellar space to accommodate the delivery of such a package over the past decade. You need to explain that. You can't just ignore it. You, this is not politics. We are talking about science here. Right. And you have to think. You can't just... So you, you can't just be a, a bureaucrat that makes statements and everyone should believe you because of your authority. Mm. That's not the way science is done. We all know that the, the church, the Vatican, apologized and admitted 350 years after Galileo died that he was right. Mm -hmm. That was a very bad public relations stunt. Imagine NASA coming up and saying it's definitely a comet and something ends up being a technological relic. How would they look? Right. So if you want to be sincere and honest, you don't make some authoritative statements by bureaucrats. Mm -hmm. You go to the data and explain the anomaly. So if you want to say this is definitely something we understand, you have to explain why is there a glow ahead of the object in the direction of motion according to the image that you are showing in the same press conference. Right. I'm mm -hmm. not saying about other images. Even your image is paradoxical. And explain it to people. Explain it to normal everyday people that can't understand physics or can't or, or don't have yeah. a, a deep understanding of astrophysics. It, it, we are human beings that live on the earth. Why can't we understand this? Exactly. No. So that's exactly my point. You know, people ask me, why are you putting t a, a significant fraction of your time explaining to the public? And I say it's because, you know, I'm puzzled just like, like the public. I don't feel myself different than the public. I just have the privilege of using the scientific method to answer questions yeah. that I'm curious about. And I take, you know, I, I'm very respectful of the curiosity of the public. As the Interstellar Wanderer 3i Atlas races through our solar system, astronomers have worked urgently to understand its nature before it disappears forever into the void. Having been observed for months through Earth-based telescopes and major space observatories, it remained a mysterious fragment from another star system whose size, structure, and internal composition resisted easy classification. That uncertainty made the early November 2025 observation by the JUICE spacecraft all the more astonishing. JUICE, bound for the icy moons of Jupiter, briefly turned its navigation camera toward the object, capturing what should have been a routine frame meant only for spacecraft orientation. Instead, the camera revealed 3i Atlas wrapped in a clearly defined luminous coma and flanked by what appeared to be two distinct tails. An object previously considered a faint, distant smudge had suddenly revealed itself as a dynamically active comet. The moment marked a turning point. For the first time, astronomers could witness fresh material, ices and dust preserved from a distant planetary system being released under the warmth of a star it did not originate from. The unexpected clarity of JUICE's images was partly due to geometry. As the spacecraft swept through deep space toward Jupiter, it occupied a vantage point impossible to replicate from Earth, offering an unrestricted view free of atmospheric distortion. What long-range telescopes struggled to resolve became unmistakable in the NavCam 2 frame. Structured outflow, a bright core, and expanding plumes of dust and gas radiating from the nucleus. The site confirmed that the comet's activity had surged after its perihelion passage, where solar heating rapidly destabilized the surface and triggered outgassing at levels stronger than anticipated. Astronomers immediately began combing through the data, using JUICE's snapshot as an anchor point for interpreting months of previous observations, subtle brightening trends, tail formation, and odd polarization signatures that had been tentatively reported suddenly made sense. The comet was shedding material vigorously, and it was doing so in ways that set it apart from the comets native to our own solar system. This activity manifested in several unexpected forms. The growing coma detected in the raw frames suggested that volatile gases, not just water vapor, but a mixture of carbon-based compounds, were expanding rapidly around the nucleus. The elongated structures jutting outward hinted at two distinct processes at work. A dust tail composed of small grains pushed gently by sunlight, 
and a plasma or ion tail shaped by interactions with the solar wind. Observers also reported evidence of a weak anti-tail, a phenomenon that arises only under rare geometric circumstances, where dust particles appear to stream toward the sun rather than away from it. Such features are commonly associated with intricate grain dynamics, telling scientists about the particle sizes and emission directions. In this case, the anti-tail hinted at a dust distribution that differed from the norm. Combined with the unusual intensity and angle of the gas tail, 3i Atlas began to look less like a standard comet and more like an object shaped by chemical and physical conditions far removed from those in our solar system. As researchers dug deeper into observational data from ground telescopes, JWST, and ESA facilities, a clearer picture emerged of just how chemically distinct 3i Atlas was. Infrared spectroscopic data revealed that the comet's coma was dominated by carbon dioxide, with water vapor playing a surprisingly minor role, an inversion of what is typically seen in comets warmed by the sun. Carbon monoxide and OCS were also detected, along with dust and ice grains whose reflectance properties suggested unfamiliar mineralogy. These findings implied the comet originated in a protoplanetary environment extremely different from the sun's. Perhaps it formed far from its native star in a region cold enough for CO2 and CO to condense in large quantities. Or perhaps it came from a carbon-rich disk where chemical pathways diverged from those common in sun-like systems. Polar Metric observations pushed the mystery further. The comet exhibited a deep and narrow negative polarization branch, a scattering pattern not observed in solar system comets. This pointed to dust grains with shapes, mixtures, or porosities that do not match any known cometary populations. Interstellar comets were expected to be unusual, but the degree of deviation suggested something far more exotic. It was in this environment of emerging anomalies that Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb advanced a more provocative interpretation of 3i Atlas, arguing that the object displayed too many peculiarities to be comfortably categorized as a conventional interstellar comet. He began by highlighting the non-gravitational acceleration detected near perihelion, an effect typically explained by asymmetric outgassing in natural comets. Yet in this case, the acceleration profile did not match what would be expected from the levels of mass loss inferred from its coma and tails. Loeb noted that the direction and magnitude of the acceleration appeared inconsistent with the observed jet morphology, suggesting that something other than outgassing might be influencing the comet's motion. Combined with the strange geometry of its sunward-directed jets and the observed plume structures, which seem to imply a level of collimation and stability unusual for a natural body, 3i Atlas already appeared to sit at the fringes of known comet behavior. Loeb continued by cataloging additional anomalies that arose when comparing 3i Atlas to established comet populations. One of the most striking involved metallic ratios. Early spectroscopic hints suggested an unexpected abundance pattern, including a nickel-to-iron ratio that deviated from what is typically observed in solar system comets and meteorites. He also pointed to the unusual reflectance and scattering properties inferred from polarimetric measurements. Not merely the deep negative polarization branch, but the narrowness of the feature, which implied dust grains unlike any documented in cometary science. Other anomalies included the comet's rapid brightening episodes, its unexpectedly stable jet orientation despite rotational modeling, and its unusually high mass loss efficiency relative to its estimated nucleus size. These features, Loeb argued, were not only individually puzzling, but collectively compounded the object's strangeness, especially when evaluated against decades of comet observations. As the list grew, Loeb proposed a likelihood-based framework, a statistical assessment of how probable it would be for all these anomalies, dynamic, geometric, chemical, and optical, to rise simultaneously in a single natural object. While he did not claim 3i Atlas to be artificial, he argued that the scientific method required entertaining that possibility once the improbabilities stacked beyond reasonable thresholds. He emphasized that the correct approach was not to leap to conclusions, but to avoid prematurely excluding hypotheses, especially when an object came from beyond the solar system and therefore could not be assumed to follow familiar cometary norms. For Loeb, 3i Atlas stood as a compelling case study in confronting unknowns without bias, a reminder that interstellar visitors may carry surprises that challenge conventional astrophysics, and that anomalies, rather than being dismissed, should be treated as data points guiding a broader investigation into the object's true nature. This line of reasoning became even more contentious when Loeb highlighted a trajectory anomaly that he argued could have profound implications. According to orbital predictions, 3i Atlas will pass unusually close to Jupiter's Hill sphere in March 2026, 
Pegasus. The Hill Sphere represents the region where Jupiter's gravity dominates over the suns, a boundary relevant for capturing moons or objects entering temporary orbit. Loeb suggested that 3i Atlas's approach path appeared almost targeted, as if finely tuned to slip into a gravitational window. He stressed that such precision would be extraordinarily unlikely for a random interstellar object. If the trajectory was not simply the product of celestial mechanics, then perhaps the comet was behaving as a probe or platform, intended to release smaller objects or gather data. Many astronomers disagreed, arguing that the projected path remained within the range of natural orbital variation and that uncertainties in early orbital solutions could exaggerate apparent coincidences. Yet the discussion itself became part of the story. As with previous interstellar visitors like Oumuamua, 3i Atlas seemed to straddle the boundary between natural phenomenon and scientific puzzle, prompting debate about what should count as sufficient evidence when evaluating objects of unknown origin. Despite the controversy, most researchers agree that the comet's chemistry offers the strongest foundation for interpreting its nature. The unusual abundance of CO2, the suppressed role of water, and the mixture of carbon-bearing volatiles all suggest that 3i Atlas was forged in an environment much colder or compositionally distinct from the regions where solar system comets formed. The exotic polarimetric signatures reinforce this idea. Dust grains reflecting light differently from any known comet hinted origins shaped by unfamiliar radiation fields or collision environments in its distant parent system. Some models propose that 3i Atlas may represent a rare type of cometary body expelled from the outermost region regions of a cold exoplanetary system. Others suggest that the diversity seen among the few interstellar objects detected so far, Oumuamua's oddly elongated shape, Borisov's unusual composition, and 3i Atlas's chemical and optical anomalies, reflects a wider plurality of planetary system architectures across the galaxy. In that sense, each visitor acts as a small, frozen messenger, carrying a sample of materials shaped under conditions no spacecraft has ever reached. What sets 3i Atlas apart from its predecessors, however, is that its activity was captured directly by a spacecraft. Juice's brief but revealing observation provided a layer of clarity unavailable from Earth, offering crucial context for interpreting follow-up data. Its confirmation that the comet was actively releasing gas and dust validated months of observation and provided an anchor around which all future modeling could revolve. It underscored the importance of having spacecraft with adaptable observation capabilities, even when not specifically designed to study comets or interstellar objects. The next generation of missions may incorporate lessons from Juice, enabling faster retargeting targeting of instruments or opportunistic data collection when unexpected events occur. As interstellar visitors may pass by only once in human history, the case for flexible mission architectures grows stronger with each anomaly discovered. As 3i Atlas now travels deeper into the outer solar system, scientists are preparing for a final phase of observation. Activity levels are expected to decline as the comet cools and volatile outgassing slows. JWST may observe the fading coma to detect changes in composition as different ices see sublimation. Ground-based telescopes will continue to monitor the tail structure to see how plasma interactions evolve with decreasing solar flux. Polarimetry campaigns aim to gather more data on the unusual scattering behavior to refine dust models. Whether or not Loeb's more speculative claims are eventually supported or disproven, these observations will help determine whether the comet's anomalies can be framed within natural astrophysical processes or whether they imply something more unprecedented. The broader significance of 3i Atlas lies not in any single anomaly, but in the accumulation of mysteries. Only a handful of interstellar objects have ever been observed, and each has defied expectations. Uamachua lacked a visible coma, but exhibited non-gravitational acceleration. Borisov behaved more like a typical comet, yet its composition differed from solar system norms. Now 3i Atlas emerges as the most chemically and optically unusual of the three. Together, these objects challenge old assumptions about what interstellar debris should look like, encouraging scientists to expand their models of planetary system evolution. They remind us that our solar system is only one example among countless others, and that even small fragments from distant worlds may reflect conditions, chemical, physical, or possibly technological, that challenge our understanding. Juice's accidental observation of 3i Atlas has reshaped the scientific narrative surrounding this interstellar visitor. What began as a faint object at the edge of detectability has become one of the most debated cosmic entities of the decade. As its luminous coma fades and its twin tails disperse into the emptiness beyond the planets, one thing remains certain. The window to decipher its mysteries is closing. Scientists may never see it again once it leaves the realm of solar influence. 
Yet the data gathered from JUICE, from telescopes around the world, and from the lively debates unfolding among researchers will continue to inform future studies of interstellar visitors. Whether natural or anomalous, 3i Atlas has offered humanity a rare opportunity to study materials forged in a distant system, awakening briefly under the warmth of the foreign star before vanishing back into interstellar darkness.